Okay, hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to do a budget constraint example. So I'm going to talk about what happens or how to solve a problem where the price of one of the goods depends on how much you've consumed. So for instance, we have $24 available. That's the income. The price of coffee, one of the two goods, is going to be $2. We'll, put, we'll call that good too. The price of cookies is going to depend on how many cookies I buy. So the first six cookies will cost $2 each and thereafter they'll cost $1 each. So in some sense, this is incentivizing large consumption of cookies, which is great for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is identify what this thing is asking us to do. What's the budget constraint going to look like? Well, it, before I do that, I'm going to first kind of visualize, I'm going to think about what the slopes are of these two portions. So the slope of the first part for the first over the first six units is going to be minus one. The slope over the second six units is going to be minus one half, right? The slope of the budget constraint is just minus P1 over P2. So it's going to be what? Minus 2 over 2 and then minus 1 over 2. That's also the marginal rate of transformation. That's the rate at which the economy is going to force uh, a trade-off if you're giving up one good for the other. Here's the solution. This is what the picture looks like. I'll talk about this in a second. Let me first talk about the strategy. So the strategy is you want to first identify how much of the constant price good you're going to be able to afford. So in this case, that's good too. You want to determine how much it'll cost to reach the point where the price of good one changes and then how much money you have left over. Uh, so that's going to be this part. Determine how much of good one and good two you can afford past that point. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I had $24. The price of coffee was two, so I could buy 12 coffees, which is a lot of coffee. And that'll leave me with zero cookies. Suppose instead I just started spending my money on cookies. By the time I had spent $12, I would have six cookies. Right, six cookies cost $12 because the first six cookies are $2 each. And once I reach this point, this has costed $12, I now have $12 remaining. I could spend those $12 on another six cookies, right? I said this right here, reaching six costs, uh, six cookies cost $12. Sorry, this isn't exactly half, but I didn't want to have to redraw it. And then over here, the other thing I could do is I could spend my remaining $12 on cookies. And after I've gotten six, well, the remaining or to exhaust my budget, the subsequent purchase of cookies are going to be at a dollar each. So with $12, I can buy 12 cookies. 12 plus 6 is 18. So maximally, I'll be able to afford 18 cookies. So what this is saying is I can do one of two things. If I just spend all my money on one good or the other, I could buy 12 coffees straight away, or I could start buying cookies. First, I buy six at a price of two, two dollars each. That'll take $12, and then I could buy another 12 at a price of a dollar each. So I could total get 18 cookies. Okay. Again, the strategy was just find out how much of the constant price good you can afford, determine how much it costs to reach the point where the price changes, determine how much of good one and good two you can afford past that point. Oh, and then notice I put, you know, here's my slope for the first portion of the budget constraint, and here's my slope for the second portion of the budget constraint, matching what we had found from earlier. So hope this was helpful. Like, subscribe, whatever. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye.